on today's show, the Dallas Mavericks snapped the Houston Rockets 11-game win streak. Luka Doncic, he took that personally. We'll talk about that. Kyrie's run to start the fourth and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now back to the Mavericks. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day where we let it ride. Let it ride. Down I-45. <laughs> Thanks for being part of the show and making Lockdown Mavs your first listen today, where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below here. Leave a comment here, and then take a little stroll. Take a little stroll down the highway and go comment, go Mavs, on Lockdown Rockets post-game video. Oh, man. Go go Lockdown Rockets right now. <laughs> comment, on the, comment on the post-game video. Joining me, as always... From 105.3, the fan, what you got for me, Reggie Atatula? Who the hell does Luka Doncic think he is? He gave the shrug. I, uh, he just he I gave mean, the shrug. The crazy thing is like we've come to expect these things and yet and still, who the hell does he think he is? And the sad part is he is. He's exactly whoever he thinks he is. Exactly like that. <laughs> Whoever you think you you are, I am the the bowler. Have you seen that clip with the yeah, bowler? Yeah, Pete, Pete Whoever Weber. you think you are, I am. He's I got am. other bars out there too. <laughs> He's like, whether you hate me or love me, oh, at that's least my you favorite watched, one. Which is bars. You Today's episode, me. we'll get into Kyrie Irving's run to start the fourth quarter. He keeps going on these runs, like he, he just can turn it on whenever he wants. So we'll talk about that. Break those down. We'll talk about the Mavs three point shooting, a magnets game, a positive magnets game for the Mavericks. So we'll talk about that and. uh and then we'll talk about all kinds of other stuff, Luka Doncic and, and and so on. I do need to say one thing, though. Just one, like, all right, family meeting, sit down. Okay, if you're if you're here on YouTube, you can have fun with the comments on the other YouTube channels. Have fun with it. Be nice. Be courteous. A, a, a handful of you went and commented, go Mavs, or we're fine, or whatever, on the Lockdown Kings Emergency Malik Monk episode which is probably just negligent behavior, but it's also just very awful. So do not do that, especially if it's on an injury episode. It's just completely uh, not what not what we want in this. We're having some fun with it. But anyway, now go to the Rockets and comment a whole bunch of stuff on, <laughs> on Jackson's <laughs> post-game video. All right, let's get into Luka Doncic. He took it personally. It felt like he took the Rockets personally. He was a game-time decision. At the, like before this game, his knee was bothering him in the last game against the Rockets. You could tell he was bleeding through his through his knee pad. He had to tape it up. He was you know questionable for that game with left Achilles soreness, and then it was right knee that was bothering him. And so before the game, Jason Kidd said he's just going to go down the court and try it out and see how it feels. And he went and saw how it feels, and I knew it. I I, I sent all the subtextures immediately. I said, "There's no way he's not playing in this game. Luca will play. In, Luca will play in this game." And he did because anytime you give Luca the option, hey, do you want to play today? Yeah, I, I would like to play basketball today. I, I yeah, would absolutely. like to. I would like to do that. And he goes out there and plays. And Luca in the first half of this game, thirty-two points, six of ten from three, and then finishes the game with forty-seven. Couldn't get that last three for fifty. Forty-seven points on nine of sixteen from three, and ties. I think George McLeod for most threes made in a Dallas Mavericks season already just playing 65 games 66 games Luka Doncic I mean he was just in his bag tonight and they didn't really Ime Udoka never really wanted to double him either yeah um and that's the thing is like as much as I don't know like the personal vendetta aspect of this uh I I my brain didn't get there because like uh, the the path of least resistance was there as well which was hey look the Rockets they they have the personnel to switch everything. And it seemed like they felt very confident doing that, knowing the ways in which we've seen since about the trade deadline teams kind of try and play these Mavs. Like, Hey, we're not going to give you the easy passes that you are clearly capable of making by, you know, sending to the ball and then playing three V four on the back end. They're like, look, we got the guys we think we can contest and they could. The problem is you're dealing with an alien. 
right? Like, and that was <laughs> that was the thing is Luka Doncic was like, oh, we're going to play one-on-one. Sure. I believe in my ability. And that gets only more difficult when he is knocking every single thing down. Including at the 10 minute mark of the third quarter, a 20 foot scoop shot from right inside the three point line that just made no sense. Literally got a text from Jackson from Lockdown Rockets. And he texted me as soon as that shot goes in. He goes, he goes, What the F is Luka Doncic? This is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's that and the two bank shots that absolutely lead to who the hell oh, the- you think you are. The right. banks where Mark Followall was like, he did it on purpose. It was on purpose. It was on purpose. 100%. It's like, and it's very evident. Like this was Love a that. game where this, this is uh, in any level, like superhero movie when, the, when they get their power and they're like, let's test the balance of this. Right. We saw it in Superman. Like in that, that, that just, or not Hitch. God, not, not, <laughs> what's the other, what's the Will Smith movie where Hitchcock? he's a super, no, Hitchcock? Hitchcock. Right. No, it's a Hancock. Hancock, that's exactly what it is. We couldn't get rid of Hitch because of Will Smith. It'd be we, like that sometimes. Th- but that's where I went with it in my brain. That's right. It's like Hancock where he gets the superpowers and he just flies around. And he starts destroying everything. <laughs> that's like, right. And Luka Doncic was just like, all right, let's see the, the extent. Step back three, yep. Bank shot, yep. Scoop shot. Oh, okay, it's all going to go. It's fine. Cool. But here's the th- here's where you, you said you couldn't see where he took it like personally. Here's mm-hmm. where I think that he took it personally. Yeah. All right. You're going to throw one player at me? Bet. Right? Like... I feel like he's he's at that point where we've seen that from a Kobe, from a from a Jordan, from a, a Larry Bird, where they're like, "Oh, you're gonna throw one guy at me? You're gonna throw Jabari Smith at me? You're gonna throw, you know, this guy Dylan Brooks at me? Like you're gonna throw you're gonna throw one guy at me and not double and not do that? Okay, I'm gonna take that personally because I'm an MVP and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna hit these shots. And then he just went and did it over and over. You're gonna let you're gonna let Jock Landale switch on me? Like all, all love to Jock Landale and all the Australians out there that exist, but you're gonna let Jock Landale come out and guard me one on one and not switch and not double and not do that. The the Rockets even doubled Kyrie at the beginning of the second quarter when Luca was off the floor. So they were doing it for Kyrie, but they weren't doing it for for uh, for Luca. And Luca just, I mean, he also just had an amazing shooting game. I mean, Nine of sixteen from three, uh, eighteen of thirty from the field total. Uh, missed three of his five free throws. But other than that, I mean, his shooting was just on another level. And coming into a game where you have, like, leg problems of multiple varieties on both legs and you're a game-time decision, that is, that is alien territory when you're dealing with those kind of leg things and then you shoot this well. And there's the thing. I thought the Rockets contested well. Like, <laughs> the athleticism of it, like, they had a hand in his, in his face most of the time. It just doesn't matter. Like apparently Lawndale is a uh, Australian for Zubach because it was the, it looked <laughs> it looked exactly the same. It did not matter. That's the thing is like, and maybe that's Lando's why Lando's got I, better hair. I'll say that. Fair enough, touche. <laughs> but maybe it's just like I have gotten used to like the Luca experience in some way because it just felt like oh, this is less about I am trying to do something particular. This is just what I do. Like this is what it, and he and when you add a good shooting night, he is impossible to deal with. Like this is. Yeah in my mind, the definition of the superstar, which is you can throw whatever you want at them. If they are having that night, it is cancel Christmas. Everything is done. And this was one of those nights where it was just like, hey, don't worry about it. You, you can play well, you can play poorly. It doesn't matter. That scoreboard is still going to light up. It absolutely was going to and did. And I mean, just he continued to see how well he was playing throughout this game and that they just didn't want to throw doubles at him. And he was like, all right, I'll just keep taking that and I can win. And then also, if you send like a if if somebody messes up and doubles on me late, I'm gonna kick out to Exum to PJ Washington who hit a bunch of threes, and we'll talk about the Mavs three point shooting in this. Uh, but yeah, Luca, Luca, just you look at his. Have you seen his? Have you seen his shot chart? Oh, I didn't even look at the shot chart. His I stopped the box score because I was like, this is crazy. His shot chart. He hit five shots like around the rim. He hit one like weird uh, corner like mid range shot from the left side. He hit one. Uh, left elbow shot, one right elbow shot, and then the scoop shot from inside, and then he hit nine threes. I mean, it's, it's just like you just look at it, and it looks it looks insane. He's just he's just painting. He's painting. It honestly, cross. it honestly looks like a broken like NFL play because <laughs> you've got the line of the three point shooting, and then you've got all the stuff like behind. Ah uh, man, I like. So th- this this was a game where, I was, and maybe I was wrong, and this is very easy. I'm wrong plenty of the times, right? I got to the point where I was like, I don't think anybody's winning this MVP except for um, 
except for Jokic, Jokic right? Like, yeah, and I, just, I still think I still think he is, even though the Mavs have gotten to fifth. But he's he's just an analytic darling and all these things, right? In addition to that team being what that team is, a game like this absolutely opens that up in my imagination in my mind. Mm. The thing is, Jokic had an incredible game tonight too. Like I was seeing Matt Moore from Locked On Nuggets tweet like. This probably isn't on the short list of the greatest Jokic games of all time, but it's definitely going to make the long list eventually. Uh, he had he had 26 points, 18 boards, 16 assists in their win against the Cavs, uh, full strength Cavs, basically. And I feel like the problem for Luka has not been statistics. Like statistics have been there, yeah. right? It's been team success, and if there's anything that will like help jolt him, like his name and his candidacy more in this. It's a game where he absolutely dominates a team like this, especially one who had this level of like buzz on them because they were the hottest team in the NBA or whatever, right? That's yeah. that's the way that I look at it. It's just this is going to draw attention. And people are going to take a closer look, and I think if that's the case, you end up in a better place of giving him a chance to actually get the votes in that place. Yeah. Oh, he's 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 second now, I think, in FanDuel on MVP, and so he's gotten he's gotten there, and so maybe he closes the gap here with, with you know. What, eight games left to go? Coming up, let's talk about what this game means. The Mavericks move up in the standings. We'll talk about Kyrie and so much more. We'll talk about all that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks Daily Fantasy made easy. You can go to Prize Picks and pick more or less than two or six players and watch the winnings roll in. I need you for this one, Reggie, because I don't know anything about baseball. Okay. okay. Adolis Garcia, Rangers against the Rays on Monday. Hitter fantasy score, 7.5, more or less. Just pick one. Yeah, give me more anything when it comes to this Rangers offense. That's right. Corey Seager, eight hitter fantasy score. I'm not even sure how you calculate that, but you know what? I, <laughs> I, I He four for four yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 going, I'm going high on all this offense stuff. All right, I got one more for you. Marcus Simeon, seven and a half hitter fantasy score. I'm the big bat. You going? You going all all more for the big bats there? I'll I'll die with this offense. This offense looks like they they can beat anybody up. Those are the most popular Rangers ones right now that you can pick. And right now, if I put down twenty bucks, I can win a hundred on. If all those hit, if I put down two hundred bucks, I can win a thousand if all those hit. So if you're really believing in the Rangers offense on a on a single day, go check that out. There's all kinds of other stuff too. It's not just baseball. They have basketball as well. They have college basketball. All kinds of things like that. Check it out. Download the app today. Use that code locked on NBA. That's all lowercase locked on NBA or prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to hundred dollars prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us on locked on maps, being part of the show, part of the raccoon squad, listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for stepping in, listening to the show, go comment on YouTube and go comment on locked on rockets on YouTube. Uh, unless they do an emergency injury episode. Don't do that. That's bad. Everybody don't. looked fine. Like the most don't thing that could have been injured was pride. <laughs> and even <laughs> then, like, I don't even know that that's a pride game. You just look up and you go, that dude, that dude's insane. What are we supposed to do? Move along. This, this game for the Mavericks meant a lot. The Rockets were coming in with 11 game win streak. The Mavs were coming in with their own, what? Six game win streak. And now, now it's seven. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's Mavs now. Right. Mavs now, Mavs now seven game win streak. It's the largest in the NBA. Yes, correct. Mm-hmm. And the Mavs move up to fifth because the Pelicans had lost the other night, and the Mavs have the tiebreaker over the Pelicans. They're both forty five and twenty nine. They're tied two to two in their head to head. But then the Mavs are twenty nine and nineteen in the Western Conference, and the Pelicans were twenty six and nineteen in the Western Conference. So the Mavs have three more wins in conference, so that matters a lot when it comes to that. And the Mavs also have the division on the Pelicans. Uh, and I actually think the the division one matters more. The Pelicans, there's all kinds of the tiebreakers are, there's, it's, they just wanted to make divisions matter in this. But the Mavs are ten and five in the division, and the Pelicans are nine and six in the division. So the Mavs are better in the division as well because the win against the Rockets was also a Western Conference win and a division win, and it got them to fifth place. The Mavs are back in fifth for the first time since going all the way back to January 16th. It was the last time that they were in fifth. And the last oh, time that wow. they were in fifth, like consistently, was like December. Uh, basically, they're in they're in fifth, third, and fourth in December. Basically, the whole month. But this was a massive, massive win for the Mavericks. Absolutely, no, absolutely right. Like uh, you mentioned, it you get a chance to continue this win streak. Um, you get that opportunity to get over the Pelicans. Honestly, like we're in territory that, as of recently, I didn't think that this team could get back into. 
and you just you move further and further away from that plane, which ultimately Huge. for me is the big thing. Give give yourself an opportunity to jump right into a series. And as it stands right now, should should this should this end right now, the Clippers? That's poetic as hell. That is poetic as hell. The Mavs would face the Clippers in the first round of the playoffs right now. That'd be the four or five, and then they would face the Thunder. One of those teams would face the Thunder in the second round if the Thunder made it. Uh, because I'm not, I'm not guaranteeing any team making to the second round in the West. No, none. Not the Mavs. Not the, not even the Nuggets, really, because the West is going to be insane in the first round this season. But uh, yeah, that's where the Mavs are right now, and the Mavs are two games up on the Suns for the play-in in seventh, and the Mavs also have the tiebreaker against the Suns. Mavs have the tiebreaker right now against the Kings because of the conference, their conference record, and so Mavs are sitting real good right now. They're sitting real good right now. The only team they don't have the tiebreaker over is the Clippers because they were one and two against the Clippers. Yeah, they've handled their business incredibly well. And, I mean, they're playing their best basketball at the right time of year as well, right? In addition to having all these tiebreakers, they're also playing incredible basketball that, I mean, if you can use it as a level of predictor, would give you some level of feeling that they will end this run in a good space and be ready for playoff basketball, which is exactly what you want. Yeah, we need to look them because there's some people, there's some NBA people that believe that March basketball is just like doesn't really matter because teams kind of phone it in. Remember the, last year, the Nuggets were just like terrible, almost terrible in the, like in the in March last season because they just kind of coasted the rest of the season. Then they turned it on and they end up w- winning the title. I'm curious if there's a, some kind of correlation to how teams do in February and March to like like you know which teams get hot because we've seen the Celtics the last couple of years get real hot in February and March and the Mavs get real hot in February and March of 2022 and make the Western conference. There's gotta be something to that. Yeah. I I don't even know that there's like, if that's a definitive thing, I feel like different teams work in different situations, right? You bring up the nuggets and that was definitely a team that was like, Hey, we, we turn on when we want to nothing. You look at the Clippers and that does not feel the same. It does not feel like a, well, when we're ready to play, we'll play. That feels a little more systemic. And so, yeah, I feel like these things, I don't know that it can be a all the way across the board situation. Kyrie Irving in this game. Let's go back to the Mavs Rockets game. Kyrie Irving in this game scored two points, right? In the first or five points in the first half. Five points. He was two of seven. And the Mavs still had a, uh, a you know a 21 point lead at the half. And so you knew Luca was, was killing at that point. And this thing that Kyrie has been doing is in the beginning of the third. I called it the beginning of the third. It didn't happen. It ended up being the beginning of the fourth. In the beginning of one of the second half quarters, Kyrie will go on a run and just like all right, I just got to make a bunch of shots right here. I'm calling my own number. I'm doing this. Like I'm, I'm calling my number here. I'm, I'm going to start like making a bunch of making a bunch of plays right here. Six of nine two, from the field. Two of three from three. Hit a, hit the technical free throw from Fred Van Vliet's tech. Four assists. Fifteen points for Kyrie in the fourth quarter. His like his ability to just like start on a dime basically and, and create these runs has been so helpful because that helped push the Mavs forward. And I think in the past. Without a Kyrie Irving, this game becomes like this game. Be, like the Rockets come back in this game in the past, sure. I think. Yeah, the, the Rockets come back and maybe because they got it within sixteen, right, or, or something like that. And I think that they would that would just kept chipping away and chipping away and chipping away at it. And the Mavs in the past maybe lose a game like this, even even with the incredible Luka shooting game. But Kyrie kept it out of hand and made it so that it was a easy like coast to coast to the win. Mavs. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like this is what. Coast to the Mavs win. You were you were there. Coast were to there. the Mavs. Mavs coast to win. I don't know what I was trying to everybody, say. Everybody, everybody understood what you meant. And see, honestly, nobody would have even called you out if you just just power through it, right? And I think some that, of that is like some of that is what Kyrie ends up giving you in a way. It's like an opportunity to power through it, right? You have not, you have not, as you mentioned, right? Like the the Rockets did not give up in this game. They just were out out outmatched. Yeah. Because we there were points where if Luca was not on the floor, like you gave teams an opportunity to get runs. Now you go, hey, now Kyrie is there and he has the type of game that's like kind of schoolyard in that way that works in that situation. They really have found maybe the best instance of what I could imagine of you go, I go basketball, right? Like those guys can coexist exist yeah. and they found a level of comfort. But at the same time, this game started with a okay, Luca, you go. And then once you're done, and we've seen this in, like, as you mentioned, third or fourth quarters, Kyrie's like, okay, now I go, and he has a level of patience and then wherewithal when that time comes to do that. And that is damning, right? Like, that is something that is that is incredibly tough to deal with because that is another elite scorer in this league, and he can get to whenever he, whatever he wants, whenever he wants. And so, like, that's that's just an impossible task to deal with, two of those 
whether you know which one is happening or at, the, at a particular time or not, it's still an impossible task to deal with, especially when the dudes around them are making shots and you can't just load up on them. And we've seen that it's not just Luca and Kyrie as the only ways to score on this team either, because we've yeah. seen them put a ton of points on the board in the paint. We've seen them, you know, hit a bunch of threes like they did in this game and spray out for a bunch of threes for, for a bunch of guys too. And so like it, when you have those options, plus Kyrie that can do this, like it just, it, it makes it so, it's so that you have so many options in front of you. All right, we're going to push this. All right, we're going to push this. We're going to push this area of the game. And Kyrie just has figured out when exactly to call his number at the beginning of these quarters in the second half after Luca calls. Luca usually calls his number at the beginning of the game. And it's like, I'm going to just go out there and score a bunch of points, see what the defense gives me, see if they try to adjust. And if they try to adjust, then we'll adjust our offense and do this. And then Kyrie comes in, and the, like, after all the adjustments have happened from the other team. All right, we're adjusting to Luca. We're adjusting to Luca. And Kyrie's like, Hey, adjust to me too now. <laughs> right. It's 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 a hell of a curveball, right? It's a hell of an off speed in a way, an off speed that goes really fast as well, right? Like, a, but like the idea <laughs> is just like this is not a one note situation. We know that yeah. at these levels of sports, you cannot be one note, and you have added multiple notes. If Luka Doncic can get to his own, if Kyrie can get to his own, and then if you want to do that, and those guys are doing a great job getting it to your bigs who operate in an entirely different way. All right, and. And at a different point in time, you might need the threes. And it really did feel like it functioned in that way where there was – you could probably break this game up into like three distinct sections where different portions of the offense carried it, whether it was Luka, Kyrie, or your others, as some folks would call them, knocking down shots. And that's that's the beauty of it is once a team starts get, getting a, a, a figure on, all right, let's we're, we might be figuring out how we can play it this way. Well, what happens when P.J. Washington's knocking down threes and Dante Exum yeah. is knocking down threes? What happens when Kyrie – is taking the Kyrie shot that you have defended well, but he just puts it over top of you and let, gets the softest touch, right? And that that's what makes this difficult is that you now have multiple ways to attack, and we've talked about this time and time again. And even the best teams are going to, at the very least, have to take time to figure those things out. And once you get a, a guy like Luka Doncic who's put you in that type of lead, now they're playing against you and the clock. And now that, that's what it felt like this Rockets game was. Absolutely. Coming up, let's talk about the magnets of the Mavs. And I'll explain what a Magnets game is for some, for some that may not know. And uh, we'll talk about the map shooting and all that coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Amazon Fire TV. Go check out Amazon Fire TV. It's your destination for sports, live games, highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Amazon Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV and make it a smart TV, giving you millions of movies, TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening week for baseball and those Rangers or their offense is killing it or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. They recently created these Fire TV channels to de deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, including Locked On, all for free. That includes us as well. Go check out the Locked On Sports Today channel, the Locked On Sports Dallas channel. There's all kinds of good stuff on there all the time. Check out the Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust us on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV, amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. All right, Reggie, let's talk about these magnets. The Mavs get a good magnets game for once. It felt like for a while the Mavs weren't going to get one. And what I mean by a magnets game is slightly, and I have made this joke that sometimes it feels like there's magnets on the rim. And one team <laughs> shoots 45% from three, the other team shoots like 20% from three. Yep. And the Mavs haven't had a lot of games like that uh, where they've just been. So they've shot so much better than, than the other team for three in a while. Uh, but the Mavericks in this game shoot 51%, 24 threes, 24 of 47 from three, an incredible amount of made threes. The most threes the Mavs have made in a single game this season, the third highest percentage they've shot in a season. And this season, the Mavs, when they shoot, uh, when they make 19 or more threes, the Mavericks are 12 and one. When they make 19 or more threes. And when Is they shoot, good? When they shoot over 45.3%, they are 7-0 this season when they shoot Seems that good. well from three. The Mavs, three-point shooting, starting with Luka, 9 of 16. Then Kyrie Irving with his pull-up shooting, 4 of, of 9. But then you got role players, and every single role player that they asked hit shots tonight. Absolutely. I mean, early Dante. PJ took some like really confident ones as well yes, and, and got them to go. Yeah, I mean, look, the, 
the, the we've had we've heard the make or miss league aspects of this. And one of the beautiful things about the ways that this team has shifted is they don't have to make threes. And so when they do make threes, it's no longer OK. Now this gives us an opportunity to win. No, that is how they bury you. And yeah, in addition to the ways and the ways in which in this league, the no lead is safe because of three point making. If that other yeah. team isn't making threes, <laughs> that's the beauty of the magnet game, I guess. Right. They, they, we were worried about the map shooting. We were, were really worried about it for a while. Hundred percent. Yeah, we were like, I, I started getting to a point like where I was wondering, it was that something that they had for a while, and now that they have changed their identity, that's that it's not going to be something that they can they can roll out there nearly as much. That it's going to be more anomalous than anything, and it feels a little bit less like that to be the case. It feels like that three point shot is still something that's in there, even though it's not going to be there all the time it'll pop up a good about a good amount more than I was starting to worry about last three games. The Mavs shot 51% from three against the Rockets, 43% against the Kings. And what was the, the one before that? It was 56, 56% from three. So you shot 51, 43 and 50, 56% from three in the last three games against teams that were good and have, mm-hmm. you know, the King, the two Kings games, they shot well from three. And then the, this Rockets game where the Rockets had 11 wins in a row. They shot from three. So maybe this is the sign that, all right, these these guys are starting to hit their threes here and they're starting to hit these open shots because they're, they're creating the same kind of looks. It's not like they yeah. created different looks in these last three games than they did in the other ones. But you just had, you know, you just had PJ hit those confident looks, like you said, X them, three of three again. I mean, every time he's in that corner, you think he's going to make that, he's gonna make that shot now. Uh, and then Tim Hardaway was three of six and Jaden Hardy was two of five from three as well in this one. I also got to imagine that like, the the mental aspect of this plays in because you could tell in some instances where the Rockets looked up and they're like Dante Exum I think in our scouting report that's the guy that we leave open boom he knocks it down <laughs> I remember him not being a good three-point shooter when I played him in the past we'll, 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 we'll leave that guy that's oh, that's that's, that's the poison that we'll pick and then it stings you and then it's and I imagine that that's also another level of demoralizing when those guys are knocking down shots as well so that that could be a, one of those like backbreaker elements of your team and speaking of confidence That's where we are with this Mavs team, confidence. And when you have confidence and chemistry, that's what took the Mavericks in 2022 from a good team, like a a pretty good team where, you know, Luca is doing some awesome stuff and Brunson was starting to show some things and like, all right, pretty good team to that chemistry took them to another level. The chemistry and confidence took them to another level where everybody's feeling confident in their role and what they do. And that's where we've gotten with this Mavericks team. And that confidence, I think, is what's making everybody feel really good about this Mavericks team. Even even people outside of the organization, outside of you know the Mavericks fan base and Mavs media and all that, people outside are starting to take note of what the Mavericks are doing right now and seeing the way that they can beat teams in different ways, the way that they're defending on a different level than they have in the past, the way that they have different looks that they can do. They went big in this game. They went small when Lively went out with that injury. We, you know, we they can put out multiple different guard lineups. They can put out multiple ball handler lineups, multiple shooter lineups, multiple big wing lineups. They've got a ton of different things. And Coach Kidd is coaching. You could hear him in the game tonight. Like you could you could hear him the like coaching from, from the sidelines and putting the effort in and like oh, there's all that from from coach. I have no complaints about Kidd. We're closer to Zen Master status, right? Like this would be the second we are, time we are in there. Right. This would be the second time in three years that it all kind of clicks up in the right situation in the right time, right? Like we're yeah. just at the right moment. All these things you talk about the confidence of people finding the right roles and you know doing their jobs to the height of their ability. This would be the second time in three years where that happens. And so I I don't know exactly how to quantify this, but Jason Kidd deserves a good amount of credit when it comes to that because he is the one organizing it and he's the one who, like, I think if we look at it, has been trying to play the mind games. And whether whether or not you believe in the mind games, the the results are starting to show up in a very big way at the right time. Someone got to get a credit for that. And usually the dude at the top does. He's, he should get credit for it. He should get credit for it. Well, I mean, Luca was, I mean, <laughs> just insane. I mean, it's kind of like you give him credit for Luca. Well, he's empowered Luca and he's, you know, he's the scheme. That's what he talked about over and over again. He talked about, remember at the beginning of the season, he said he's as good, he's as good or better than Dirk at the beginning of the season. He has put, he's instilled confidence in Luca. And maybe Luca didn't need the confidence, but I not mean, on offense, but on defense. Like, I mean, you yeah. saw Kyrie Irving in this game. Kyrie yeah. Irving was out here in front of uh, Jalen Green, moving his feet and not allowing him to get downhill, right? Like the ways in which that they've embraced all of it, not just one side of the ball, um, it matters. It absolutely matters.
Absolutely. The Mavs defense, we have not talked about the Mavs defense enough in this game. Uh, we spent a lot of time on the offense, but Dylan Brooks, 0 of 8 from the field. Jalen Green, who's been amazing, who's like Luca's competition for Western Conference Player of the Month, probably. 5 of 15 from the field. Missed all five of his threes and didn't look that great at all in this game. And the Mavs just completely closed it up and stopped drives and stopped the Rockets from doing all their athletic stuff and putbacks and all kinds of stuff that they've been used to, you know, that they've been doing. Uh, give credit to Daniel Gafford in the middle. Give credit to Derek Jones Jr. for chasing him around. Give credit to P.J. Washington for just being an amazing defender. Five fouls. Hey, we'll, we'll take it. You get you get six of them. So you get you get five. They don't roll months. over. That's right. Yeah. No, I like that was the thing is the defensive principles that they've established. They played that to per, played it perfectly. And like it seems like when it comes to the game plan, the, the notes, they're hitting him perfectly. Um, and leaning into their size and their their anchor in the in the paint and making sure that they're funneling guys into Lively and Gafford and those guys are cleaning up. And so I, there's a ton of credit, a ton of praise that needs to be spread all the way across his team. They're looking incredible. They are looking incredible. There has not been any news of Lively, by the way. He subbed out at the end of the second quarter with a what they're calling a uh, right lower leg injury. And so we're not sure about that. We'll see what happens. The Mavericks play next against the Warriors on Tuesday. And so they have to fly, they have to go back to Northern California, which is just a weird schedule thing because of the death of the Warriors assistant coach. They had to change the schedule up. And so they go back to, to Northern California and play that game. And so we'll see what happens then. And then the Mavs have two home games against the Hawks and against the Warriors to end this week. And so we'll be here for all of those. Subscribe to Lockdown Mavs. Go comment on Lockdown Rockets YouTube channel. Uh, and, and just say go Mavs on there. But yeah, we'll be back. Go listen to Reggie on 105.3 The Fan sometime this week whenever the Rangers don't play. <laughs> That's right. And, then, and, then, and do that. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.